Hi, I'm Phil Savadick, and I'm here at the MZ TV Museum. Television was invented by a 14-year-old farm boy while he was plowing a field. And he looked down at the lines in the dirt, and he said to himself, if I could train an electron to do what my horse does and go to the end of the row and turn around and come back, I could send pictures through the air. a suit that we uh, that we found when we were going through boxes and uh, finding all the artifacts here and all the documents uh, and we thought that would be appropriate to get cleaned up and bring it out here tonight. Now at 15, finally Philo Farnsworth got to go to high school and they had books and they had a science teacher and he said to his science teacher, can I take physics and chemistry? And the teacher said, no, you're a freshman. So finally he explained his idea and he was going to invent electronic television. And this is the drawing of the first electronic television camera. And basically it was going to be a jar with a lens and electromagnets, and ultimately it would scan the image one line at a time. He was inventing a scanner while living on a farm with no electricity, no telephone, no computers, obviously no television, radio, nothing. It came out of the earth. He convinced two investors to put their life savings into his invention called television. And he drew an exact copy of what a television set was going to be when he was 19 years old in 1926. It would take him another year to make the tools, to invent the tools, to actually make the receiver. And that was one of the first TV sets. Philo Farnsworth is this forgotten genius. Even though he invented television, if you ask somebody who invented television, almost nobody could tell you his name. I had this vague idea, yeah, he was a farm boy, but then you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the technology of the yeah. era, right? And that's a harrow plow, and we have one surviving disc from that harrow plow. And then there's the human drama, right? Because right by his side was his gal. Uh, Elma Pem, she was mm -hmm. called. So this is an epic movie. It should be an epic right. movie. She, she's yes. the first person ever broadcast on television, technically, right? Yes. Now this plinth is called The Day TV Was Born. And we have a little film that reenacts The Day TV Was Born. But there is the first television camera that ever broadcast an image. The book in the middle was actually his day-by-day -day journal of the invention of television. And the page I left it open to was September 7th, 1927, when he writes with his shaking hand, the received line picture was evident this time. And he turns to his wife and he says, well, there it is, television. I said I'd do it, but there it is. It was in his head so long, he just had to wait till he could finally create it. Uh, obviously the world takes notice and he becomes a bit of a celebrity. And he builds a, a laboratory and they start actually making television receivers. Now, in 1930, Farnsworth has a working television system, but RCA does not. So they offer to buy it from him for 100,000 depression dollars, which is an enormous amount of money, but he refuses. He says, I invented it. I will get a royalty on every television set ever made. So why should I sell to you at RCA? So since he won't sell it to them, they steal the idea. They send their head scientist to his laboratory. Vladimir Zworykin, who we have the picture on the wall, literally knocks on Farnsworth's door and says, I hear you've been having great success with your cathode ray tubes, and we at Westinghouse might like to license it. Will you show me how your system works? The 24-year-old inventor builds a camera, builds a receiver, shows him how it works. But instead of licensing it, Swarkin goes back to his hotel and writes a 700-word telegram stealing the idea. Then a few years later, Farnsworth says, well, wait a minute, this is my idea. The patent, I have the patent, let's decide this thing, and thus begins the big patent war. There is the RCA tube, there is the Farnsworth tube, and the court finds there is nothing in the RCA system that they didn't steal from the Farnsworth system. And he wins the priority of invention. 
and he should indeed have received a royalty on every single television. But it didn't work out that way. And the reason was World War II. It was a seven year lapse in television development where the world was at war. So Dr. Farnsworth went and started working on radar and night vision, drone cameras, and all kinds of war related items, but there was no television. His patents from 1930 were expiring in 1946 and 1947. So uh, by that time, anyone could use this technology without paying him. So unfortunately, he's a forgotten genius because he was left out of the development of his invention. He withdrew into himself. Uh, he tried not to bear a public grudge, but how could you avoid being bitter? And then on the night that we put a man on the moon and he was watching it, he, he turned to his wife and he said, I didn't think it was worth it, but now maybe I do. And so now we're trying not to, uh, you know, resuscitate the fortune, which never was, but just his reputation. He deserves to live forever. I never had to worry about finding a school project to do. In fact, some years I got to just, you know, take last year's material and readapt it for the new year. So I guess I was a little bit lucky.